morning students i welcome you all to the online session and i hope you all must be fit and fine today we are going to start about a chapter from our geography chapter uh, textbook right so before i reveal you the name of the chapter let me show you some of the things which i have i've got rice i've got wheat i've got pulses this is masoor dal i have got turmeric i have got coriander i have got coffee i also have got oranges fruits that is grapes tomatoes then cucumber and pitagard right so all these are the varieties of fruits and vegetables which are being grown in our country apart from that many other fruits and vegetables are also grown okay so by this time you must be having an idea which particular chapter we are going to read i'll give you one more hint in the year 1960 green revolution was started to give boost to these wheat and rice for the production of these two food crops okay yes you must have guessed it correctly today we are going to start about the topic that is from geography chapter 4 agriculture so let's start our topic that is agriculture you all must be knowing india is an agriculture country 60% of the people they depend upon agriculture for their livelihood an agriculture is considered to be the backbone of india's economy fine so you will see in this particular topic we will discuss about agriculture we will discuss about the varieties of food crops and cash crops which are being grown we will also discuss about the steps and the initiatives taken by the government to boost agriculture so in this uh, it's been divided uh, into three broad categories that is your first one will deal about the types of farming that is the types of agriculture second uh, will deal about your varieties of food crops and cash crops which are being grown in our country and the third bit it deals with the institutional and technological reforms which are being taken by the government that is steps and initiative taken by the government to boost agriculture okay before we start let me tell you chapter number 2 and 3 from the textbook is not there in your board exam so we have not taken it up however chapter 3 will be included for your internal exams which may be in the form of your uh, one mark question or mcqs or whatsoever will let you inform you but today we are starting with chapter number 4 right so let's start out what exactly do you mean by the term agriculture agriculture is the art and science of growing and harvesting the crops apart from that you will see when i talk about growing and harvesting the crop it includes a number of activities like cultivating the soil that is your soil has to be tilled out apart from that the tilling is being done so as to ensure that air and water percolates deep into the soil fine once the soil is ready the seeds have to be sown you can see the slide over here the seeds are being sown over there and within few months or within a short span uh, of time the crops are ready for the for the processing like maybe after 6 months or depending upon the type of crop it's ready then once the crop is ready the harvesting process starts so this is how all these are the number of activities which are included in your agriculture so this is what is the definition and the meaning regarding the term agriculture i'll repeat once again art and science of growing and harvesting the crop that is why that is what is called to be as agriculture now let us see what is 
exactly is the importance of agriculture? Why agriculture activity is considered to be such as such an important activity? Point number one, it generates employment. Two thirds of the people of our country, they depend upon agriculture. It, it provides a source of livelihood to these people. Fine. Second one, you will see it provides most of the food crops and the varieties of uh, non-food crops which we consume. Third, it's a source of raw material. You all must be knowing various agro-based industries are there, which has to depend upon agriculture for its raw material. So agriculture provides raw material for agro-based industries, like for sugarcane is needed for sugar industry, cotton is needed for your textile. So all these are your agro-based industries. Apart from that, it also enhances foreign trade. That is, if too much of commodity is being produced in the country and it's needed by some other country, we can easily export and import it, right? So in this way, it helps in the enhancement of foreign trade. Next one, that is your fourth point. That is, it helps in earning foreign exchange. Once the foreign trade is being enhanced, we get foreign exchange. So it helps in all these activities. So this is why agriculture is considered to be one of the important activity. Usually come in your exam for three mark question. What is the importance of agriculture? I'll sum up again. Key points. Provides employment. Provides variety, most of the food crops which we produce. Then it's a source of raw material. Enhances foreign trade. Helps in earning foreign exchange. So this is how and this is the reason why agriculture is considered to be one of the most important activity. Okay. So all these five points you need to remember. Apart from that, you will also see when we talk about agriculture, this particular agriculture is being categorized into two broad categories. It varies, that is your farming activities varies from subsistence to commercial farming. So when I talk about subsistence farming, see all of you, subsistence, the word subsistence means self-consumption. So such type of farming which is being done for self-consumption purpose. Such type of farming is called to be as your subsistence farming. Whereas, when I talk about your uh, commercial farming, the name itself suggests commercial. That is not for self-consumption purpose, but for sale in the market. Right? So here, in subsistence farming, you will see basically all the food crops are being grown. Basically for self-consumption purpose. Or whatever produce will be there, it will be only for self-consumption and not for sale in the market. Whereas, when I talk about commercial farming, commercial farming you will see is being done for sale in the market. Right? So, this is, these are the two broad categories for your subsistence farming. That is subsistence as well as commercial farming. Now, during the primitive time, Agriculture was being practiced using old tools and equipments. You will come across old tools and equipments like hoe, like dao, right? Apart from that, you will also see these types of activities. Like it was done basically with the help of the family members themselves. Hardly any manures and fertilizers were being uh, used out. Let's start out with subsistence farming. As I told you, subsistence farming is basically for self-consumption. Now this subsistence farming is divided into two categories. One is your subsist primitive subsistence farming. Another is your intensive subsistence farming. So let's start out. Primitive subsistence farming. This type of farming basically... It is practiced on a small patch of land. And it is being done using primitive tools. See some of the primitive tools over here. I have shown. It's like how, thou, 
and digging sticks right these are the primit primitive tools which were used earlier apart from that this type of farming is basically done by the family members and as, as it is only for the self consumption not for sale in the market so a small produce has to be produced out right so the family members they themselves practice it out and it depends upon rain no artificial irrigation is being used over here even uh, to restore the fertility of the soil it depends upon uh, its natural fertility so these are some of the features regarding your primitive subsistence farming apart from that you all must be knowing or must have heard about slash and burn agriculture so this particular farming is also called to be as slash and burn agriculture wherein a patch of land is being cleared out and in that particular patch of land you will see after clearing it is burnt out and ashes are spread all over the field and then seeds are being sown up usually this type of farming is being practiced in small pockets of india not throughout the country but in some of the areas especially where you will come across your tribal regions these types of farming is being done you will see when over a period of time soil fertility decreases people they move on to the next patch of land clear the next patch of land and leave it fallow so as to regain the soil fertility you will see the site of farming has got certain demerits also like for example um many a times they burn it out right the um, it causes smoke which is uh, like pollution is being created many times there are chances that forest fire might take place and nowadays hardly people do practice these types of agriculture no use of manures are there so you will see the productivity is also very less and this particular slash and, slash and burn agriculture it is known by different names in different corners of the country like for example in milpa it's known uh, as milpa in mexico re in vietnam roca in brazil and so on a number of names have been given in your textbook you need not remember it it's just for your information never comes in your exam so this is regarding your primitive subsistence farming now the second type of subsistence farming that is your intensive subsistence farming when i talk about intensive subsistence farming it's being practiced in those areas where the pressure on the land is more that is population is very high in those areas intensive subsistence farming is being practiced more pressure is there on the land and it's a labor intensive farming apart from that chemicals and fertilizers are also being used up as from a small patch of land more has to be grown so more the addition of chemicals and fertilizers are there you will see due to right of inheritance that is what exactly is right of inheritance that is the father's property passes on to the son and to the next generation so that is right of inheritance the size of the land holding it's becoming smaller day by day and so it's very difficult to practice or use modern equipments in that so such a type of farming it's called to be as your intensive subsistence farming apart from that you will also see we have got another category that is called to be as your commercial farming as the name itself suggests done for sale in the market for the commercial purpose whatever crops are being grown basically it is being grown to be sold outside not for self consumption so now let's see some of the features of this type of commercial farming it's like modern inputs are being used out modern technology is being used high yielding variety seeds are being used in this particular type of farming you will also see commercial crop 
may be grown um, as a subsistence cropping also and uh, same as a commercial crop also. It varies from area to area. Not only this, under this particular commercial crops, high doses of chemicals and fertilizers are being grown out, grown. So, um, sorry, high doses of chemicals and fertilizers are used up so that more can be grown from the field. Output of the produce should be more. So, such a type of farming is called to be as commercial farming. Under commercial farming, we have a type that is called to be as plantation farming. So, what exactly is this plantation farming? It's a type of commercial farming in which throughout the field, to a very large extent, only a single crop is being grown. It's capital intensive, lots and lots of money is being required, as well as it's also labor intensive. Migrant labors, they are being used out. You must have heard about in the colonial period, people from Asia and Africa, they were being uh, taken away by the Britishers to carry on the plantation farming, right? Especially those Caribbean islands. So such type of plantation farming is being practiced out. Here also high doses of chemicals and fertilizers are being used. Irrigation uh, is being done on a very large scale so that the productivity is good. Apart from that, um, the crop uh, which are being grown is being sold in the market. Now for selling in the market, you need good connectivity. Right? From uh, farm to the market area. So enhanced transportation and commun communication facilities are needed. So such a type of farming is being done which is called to be as a commercial farming. Apart from that we have got some, some examples like examples of tea, rubber, coffee. All these are the plantation crop. Right? So let's um, have a quick look. What exactly we have learned today? We have discussed regarding the definition of agriculture. We have seen the types of farming broadly being categorized into two types. What is that? It's a subsistence and commercial crop. And we have got the bifurcation of subsistence farming into primitive subsistence and intensive subsistence. Then we have discussed regarding the commercial farming and under that plantation farming is a subject. Right? So, till here only we will discuss today and uh, now let's take out your notebook and uh, we will take down some of the questions relating to the topics which we have discussed. Okay, uh, so you see, take down the question. Question number one, define the term agriculture. One more question. Second question. Explain the features of primitive subsistence and intensive subsistence farming. Third one. Third question. Explain the features of commercial farming. Fine. So these three to four questions you need to do. So we are going to discuss this much only in today's topic. See you in the next lecture. Kindly do your homework. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Okay. Thank you.